Misaki Ayuzawa, the first female student council president of the previously all-boys Seka High School, is highly respected by the female students but feared and loathed by the male students. She secretly works part-time at a maid cafe, called Maid Latte, to support her sister Suzuna Ayuzawa and her mother Minako Ayuzawa, seeing as her father Sakuya Ayuzawa left them with a tremendous debt. A popular male student named Takumi Usui discovers Misaki there, and she fears her secret will be exposed at school. However, Usuki keeps her secret after listening to her reasons for her part-time job, though later choosing to annoy her by becoming a regular customer. When Misaki becomes sick due to stress and fatigue, Usui advises Misaki to loosen up, but she rejects his advice. At work, Misaki is discovered by Naoya Shirakawa, Ikuto Sadashina, and Ryonosuke Kurosaki, three male students referred to as the idiot trio. They harass her until Usui shows up to intervene. Misaki apologizes to Usui before fainting. After Misaki recovers, Usui tells Misaki that he had asked the idiot trio to keep her secret. Then he teases her about becoming his personal maid for a day as his reward. With the annual school festival coming up, Misaki uses this opportunity to improve the school's image by encouraging more girls to enroll. However, problems arise with class 2 too, because the activities proposed by the boys are attempts to exploit the girls. Misaki ultimately decides that class 2 2 will host the coffee shop, as suggested by three female classmates. Misaki acts hostile towards the male classmates during their preparations, and Usui warns her after work that her hostility will eventually backfire. On the day of the school festival, there's a huge turnout of female visitors. Unfortunately, Misaki finds her male classmates are cosplayed in various military outfits. She scolds the boys, but they end up leaving the female classmates to run the coffee shop alone. As Misaki serves multiple patrons at once, she accidentally calls one of them master. Usui covers for her by acting as a butler. Having seen the action through the classroom door, the boys return and serve the patrons properly. During the school festival after party, Usui finds Misaki resting under a tree, where she thanks him for his assistance. Usui then continues to tease Misaki about being his personal maid. Maid Latte plans to host a Little Sister Day, where the maids roleplay as little sisters to their customers, but Misaki struggles to fit the personality with no prior experience. Although co-worker Honoka accuses Misaki of not taking it seriously, manager Satsuki Hyodo suggests Misaki can skip the event and change shifts. Convinced that she can take on the character, Misaki learns from her friends Sakura Hanazono and Shizuku Kaga, then practices on the idiot trio. As Little Sister Day arrives, Misaki awes the customers with her improved Little Sister act. However, when Usui shows up, he constantly nags her and requests impossible orders, which causes Misaki to lose her temper. When he tries to leave, she begs him to stay, causing spectators to be attracted to her cute qualities. The next day at school, Usui witnesses Misaki rescuing a student from a falling ladder in the library. Noticing that her arm was injured by the ladder, Usui convinces Misaki to bandage it up in the school infirmary. Maid Latte hosts a Maid Power Rangers Day and Misaki is dressed in white, which was suggested by Usui due to Misaki's refusal to be influenced by others. Maid Latte is visited by Aoi Hyodo, a famous net idol who is introduced as Satsuki's niece. An excited Aoi wears the maid uniform, though Misaki tries to tell Aoi that it's only for an employee to wear. Aoi finds Usui attractive, but he repeatedly ignores her advances. When co-worker Erika alerts Satsuki that the cafe chef called in sick, Usui volunteers to help, impressing the ladies with a modified version of omurice. The next day, Aoi confronts Misaki for not wearing feminine clothing. The following day, Aoi is so persistent with her advances that Usui pushes her into the locker room floor, just as Misaki arrives to push Usui away and slap Aoi. It is revealed that Aoi is in fact a cross-dressing boy, who ran away from home because his classmates made fun of him for liking girlish things. The day after that, Misaki and Aoi spend some time together, and he eventually watches as she solely takes down a burglar in the streets. Although they agree they both should just be themselves, Aoi gives Misaki a cute dress several days later, much to her embarrassment. After scolding student council vice president Shichiro Yukimura over the phone for slacking off in paperwork, Misaki is soon warned by Satsuki about stalkers targeting girls working in cosplay cafes. With Misaki refusing to take an armed weapon for protection, Usui pretends to stalk her after school. Even when she finishes the paperwork for Yukimura, sees Sakura off to the subway station and goes to work at Maid Latte during the night shift. After Erika and co-worker Subaru leave work early, Usui gives Misaki a scare after she closes the cafe. 
The next day after school, Misaki closes the cafe again, at night, since Satsuki had to leave work a few hours earlier. This time Misaki is captured by two stalkers who posed as customers. Usui hears the commotion from outside and prepares to kick the window, but Misaki breaks free from the handcuffs and duct tape beating up the stalkers with Aikido and shattering their sadomasochistic fantasy. A few days later, Aoi returns to Maid Latte in order to send Misaki, Hanoka, Erika, Subato, and even Usui a photo of Misaki wearing the cute dress for their cell phone wallpapers, much to Misaki's horror. The Inuyama brothers, quintuplets who are fans of Misaki at school, are admirably eager to know everything about her, but this could reveal her secret part-time job. She manages to dodge them at the subway station thanks to Usui. At Maid Latte, Usui takes a photo with Misaki in twin tails, wearing her maid uniform. Misaki is eventually reminded that she might have to stop running away and tell the truth to the Inuyama brothers. One day on the school roof, Misaki tells Usui that she plans on being upfront with the Inuyama brothers about her part-time job. She's caught off guard when Usui keeps the photo with him as she knocks it out of his hand and in the direction of the Inuyama brothers. He steals her first kiss before jumping off the school roof, then grabs the photo after falling in the school swimming pool. While Misaki is relieved to find Usui alright, the Inuyama brothers are soon convinced to believe that Misaki is Usui's bodyguard, thus keeping Misaki's secret safe. Misaki later visits Usui at the hospital, but leaves in disgust when he asks her to nurse him in her maid uniform. Misaki continues having thoughts about her first kiss, following Usui's patient discharge. She receives a call from Sakura and Shizuo, who ask her to stop a fight between two students from Seika High School named Takamizawa and Ishida, and three students from the prestigious Miyabikoka High School led by Hirofumi Kogane. Misaki dismisses her feelings of Usui after she witnesses him kissing Yukimura. With Usui tagging along on the bus, Misaki learns from Takimizawa and Ishida that Kogane insulted them for taking an interest in chess and called them insects. Upon arriving at Miyabikoka High School, Misaki tells Kogane that her classmates will apologize if he apologizes first. Kogane complies only if he's beaten in a chess match, though Usui humiliates him by winning. Tora Igarashi, the student council president of Miyabigoka High School, later arrives at Seika High School in order to formally apologize to Misaki for Kogane's behavior. With gentlemanly manners, Igarashi attempts to offer Misaki a scholarship to Miyabigoka High School. Maid Latte hosts a male dress-up day to impress the female customers, but Usui reminds Misaki that she is still female. Meanwhile, Igarashi learns of Misaki's part-time job and reveals his hidden lecherous nature. Kanade Maki, the student council vice president of Miyabigoka High School, personally invites Misaki to transfer schools. Three days later, Misaki eventually goes to Miyabigoka High School in order to say her final decision to Ikarashi. Though Sakura and Shizuko are worried she will permanently leave Seika High School. Even though they want the best for Misaki, they rely on the student council and her fans as they head for Miyabigoka High School in order to convince her not to transfer. Meanwhile, as Misaki is about to give Igarashi her response, Maki accidentally spills orange juice on her. Igarashi soon reveals that he knew about Misaki's part-time job, while assuming that she is looking for attention and money. However, Misaki declined his offer and has no intention of leaving Seka High School. As Igarashi attempts to violate Misaki, Usui rescues her. Afterwards, Misaki thanks Usui, who picked up her school uniform from dry cleaning. Misaki is greeted by her friends waiting outside the school gate. Both an avid fan of the indie rock band Uks Mishi and in love with vocalist Kuga Sakurai, Sakura invites Misaki and Shizuko after school to an upcoming tea party hosted by Uks Mishi at a restaurant called Sun Vaka Cafe, where the idiot trio surprisingly work as part-time waiters. On the day of the tea party, Kuga takes an interest in Misaki and ignores Sakura. Following a private discussion with bassist Koma Yafu in the restroom, Kuga attempts to entice Misaki with a free concert ticket. After Misaki's trip to the restroom, Kuga and Koma wait outside for her, as Kuga admits that he doesn't have feelings for Sakura and the tea party was just an event for the fans. Usui intervenes with his disguise as a waiter and gives Misaki advice on how to deal with her current situation. After Kuga hurts Sakura's feelings at the table, Misaki angrily grabs Kuga by the necktie and disallows Sakura being handed over to someone like him. Outside Sunvaka Cafe, Shizuko admonishes Misaki for her short temper and Sakura for her poor choice in boys. 
Misaki pats Sakura's head for comfort, hoping that Sakura will find true love someday. Usui inadvertently meets Minako in the streets, and helps carry some of her dropped apples. She invites him inside her house for tea, with Suzuna out of gratitude. As Misaki arrives, she's shocked to see Usui there, dragging him to the park and warning him to stay away from her house. The next day, Misaki, Sakura, and Shizuko decide to follow Usui after school, in order to peek into his private life and confirm rumors about him being rich. However, Usui knows that he's being followed and leads them on a wild goose chase around town. After leaving Maid Latte, they visit a health club, a suit store, and a restaurant among other locations. When the girls give up tailing him all day, Misaki finds Usui at a pedestrian overpass, where he tends to a stray cat. Though she denies being interested in his private life, he remarks that it was the first time she showed any interest at all. He gives her his home address, just in case she changes her mind. Misaki later looks over the directions in her bedroom, while Usui is shown living alone in a tall apartment building with the stray cat. Following a kimono day held at Maid Latte, Misaki participates in the sports festival held at Seika High School. She wins the first eight events to secure the prizes for the female team. At the ninth event, the obstacle race, where the first prize is a kiss from an unwilling Sakura, Misaki takes the lead until Masuru Goda attempts to push Misaki into the school's swimming pool in order to disqualify her. Usui saves her from falling and wins the race, but he rejects the prize and gives it to Misaki as the runner-up. Later on, Misaki enters the twelfth event, the costume race. Inside the changing tent, Misaki discovers that her mystery bag contains a maid uniform, unknowingly handcrafted by the idiot trio, but she accidentally switches it with Yukimura's costume. After seeing Yukimura jeered by the boys, Misaki resolves to help him, even after Usui explains that Yukimura is putting so much effort into this futile event. Misaki and Usui both don cool samurai outfits and defend Yukimura, finishing the race together. Yukimura enjoys himself, and Misaki is inspired to make the costume race even better next year. Goki Aratake, the strongest delinquent in size in middle school, yearns to be like his reformed upperclassman, the former gang leader Shiroyan, who was actually Naoya of the Idiot Trio. After the Aratake gang followed the Idiot Trio to Maid Latte, the Aratake gang deduced that Naoya has gone soft. Later, Aratake appears at Seika High School, and abducts Yukimura dressed as a schoolgirl, who's mistaken as Naoya's girlfriend. After passing by Seisen Middle School, Misaki, Usui, the Idiot Trio, and Aoi prepare for a rescue mission. They change into delinquent disguises, though they are momentarily interrupted by Suzuna, Satsuki, Sakura, Shizuko, and even the Inuyama brothers. Meanwhile, at the Aritake gang's secret base, Aritake reminisces about the inspirational events caused by Naoya. Misaki, Usui, the idiot trio, and Aoi arrive at the secret base, where a fistfight erupts between Naoya and Aritake. After Naoya wins, Aritake reveals that he only wanted to be a hero like Naoya. With the ordeal over, the idiot trio introduces Misaki to the Aritake gang as their fearsome maid and president, much to her horror. Amidst the chaos, everyone forgets about Yukimura. When the student council plans to hold an open house at Seka High School to attract more female enrollment, a gynophobia male freshman named Sotaru Kano is opposed to the idea and tries to derail the progress by hypnotizing the student council members. After finding Kano in the broadcasting room, Misaki is hypnotized and wakes up in the school infirmary. Usui is amazed to see her dazed and confused. When Kano tries to stop Usui, the latter is revealed to be immune to the former's abilities. Misaki then finds Kano in the chemistry preparation room, but Kano seeks revenge by hypnotizing her to hate Usui forever if she falls asleep within the next 24 hours. Misaki stays up all night with Usui's constant calling. However, Kano hypnotizes Yukimura to give Misaki a sleep-inducing painkiller. She becomes extremely sleepy and falls asleep within five minutes before the time limit. As she nods off, she asks Usui if she will forget her feelings of gratitude towards him and hopes to get the chance of repaying him properly. Usui embraces her with a vow to help her whenever she needs, and to make her fall in love with him all over again. Overcoming drowsiness before the time limit, Misaki resists Kano's hypnosis. As punishment, Kano is forced to help the female students assigned as cafeteria staff with the upcoming open house. With Yukimura as the staff leader, Kano eventually helps with preparations after initially trying to escape from Misaki's eye. On the day before the open house, Sakura and Shizuo find a box of maid uniforms, and Misaki reluctantly agrees that the cafeteria staff should wear them during open house. When the day comes, Misaki guides all the middle school visitors on a tour around the school. 
Meanwhile, the idiot trio are upset that Misaki has not showed up at Maid Latte. So the other employees, including kitchen staff members, Sen and Mochi, kindly welcome the idiot trio. Misaki assigns Usui to promote the sports clubs, while the cafeteria staff dress up Kano as a bunny butler. Kano tells Misaki of his belief that all women are fragile. Realizing that his mother was not fragile, but instead left his abusive professional wrestling father during childhood, Kano helps a female middle school visitor conquer her androphobia, the fear of men. Misaki also repays Usui for promoting the sports clubs by putting him on the head. On the first day of summer vacation, Satsuki's younger sister, Nagisa Hyodo, invites the maid latte employees to her beach house, though accompanied by Aoi and Usui. Maid Latte decides to host a gorilla event at the beach house to attract customers, but Misaki is not so keen on wearing a swimsuit as part of the maid uniform. She is momentarily convinced after seeing the other employees serve incoming customers, but Usui gives her a hickey on her back after she changes clothes, forcing her to wear a t-shirt in order to hide it. Later that night, the employees prepare to head to the local hot springs in order to celebrate, but Misaki reluctantly decides to stay behind after being spooked by Hanoka's ghost story as well as the hickey. She later rushes after them alone, believing that they had left their free tickets behind. Getting lost along the way, she becomes frightened until Usui grabs her. Realizing his mistake, Usui apologetically hugs Misaki to calm her down. Aoi suddenly arrives and tells Misaki to admit that she likes Usui. Upon reaching the hot springs, Misaki realizes that her effort was in vain, since she brought the extra tickets. On the second day of summer vacation, Nagisa allows her nephew, Aoi, to continue cross-dressing only if he wins the local mixed doubles beach volleyball tournament. Impressed by Aoi's determination, Misaki agrees to be his teammate and learns from Satsuki that the winning team will be crowned the Beach Prince and Princess. Usui and Erika surprised the others by also entering the tournament. Both teams easily defeated their competition, earning them a face-off in the final round. Frustrating over why Usui is being extremely competitive, Misaki embarrassingly blurts out her anger, much to the crowd's surprise. After Usui's next save, Aoi dives and digs, allowing Misaki to spike the volleyball over the net. When Misaki stumbles back towards the referee stand, Usui luckily jumps in the way, consequently bruising his shoulder. Although Misaki and Aoi win the tournament, Misaki skips the festival in order to reconcile with Usui. Misaki is flattered when Usui reveals that he only entered the tournament to prevent her from being exploited as the beach princess. Their kiss is interrupted by a display of distant fireworks. At the end of summer vacation, a commemorative group photo is taken with everyone, including employees Seiyu and Gon. In order to get over his gynophobia, Kano helps Yukimura with paperwork, due to Yukimura having feminine qualities. Usui still jokes with Misaki being his personal maid for a day as her repayment. After a shrine maiden day is held at Maid Latte, Maki comes with an order to buy Maid Latte for his family dining empire and replace it with a butler cafe. Igarashi gives his support to this cause and invites the employees to observe the footman auditions. On the following week at Miyabagoka High School, Misaki and Subaru disguise themselves in black suits to prepare for the male-only footman auditions and prove their service skills. The first round, which is a series of obstacles, proves to be difficult. Misaki momentarily discovers that Naoya, Ryonosuke, Yukimura, Kano, Usui, and Aoi are all participating in the auditions. Subaru is disqualified after being exposed as a girl, while Aoi is disqualified for being recognized as underage. Igodashi suggests for Maki to allow allow Misaki and Usui to form a pair if they can prove their eligibility. Misaki passes the gender test by planting Usui's hand onto her flat chest. The two then unsuccessfully move on to the second round together. In the second round of the footman auditions, Usui and Misaki succeed in the required task of setting up an elegant table for afternoon tea. Usui also has to contend with Yukimura's curiosity by assuming a false identity and referring to Misaki as a boy. Before the final round begins, Misaki falls from the high stage after being startled by Yukimura, but Usui breaks her fall on the floor. Although Misaki is aware that Usui's arms are injured, she conceals this fact during the third round, which requires them both to pass a simulation of customer interaction with Maki. However, Maki becomes suspicious when Misaki does all the work, but Usui attempts to cover it up by playing the violin. Misaki soon asks Usui to stop playing and lectures Maki on the importance of helping colleagues. Motivated by her speech, Maki decides to call off buying maid latte and move his butler cafe elsewhere. Misaki visits Usui's home to take care of him, though surprised to find him living alone in a luxurious apartment. She apologizes for being so reliant on him, but he professes that he has also become reliant on her. 
Ryuri Yukimura, who dreams of being a princess, refuses to acknowledge her older brother Yukimura since he does not meet her ideal image of a prince, which Usui surprisingly does. This gives Yukimura the idea that Usui should have a playdate with Ryuri. During the playdate, Misaki, Yukimura, Kano, and Aoi eventually witness Usui being a better older brother to Ruri, prompting Kano and Misaki to each interrupt the playdate with Aoi's help. Ruri runs into a coffee shop and accidentally causes a cupboard to topple. Luckily, Usui stops the cupboard while Yukimura shields Ruri. When her prideful behavior goes too far, she apologizes and accepts Yukimura as her older brother after he scolds her. Sometime later, Aoi, in his cross-dressing attire, momentarily enlists Yukimura, Kano, and the idiot trio to film a promotional video in the park. Afterwards, an escaping purse snatcher bumps into Aoi, causing him to drop the camera's memory card over the railing. Aoi nearly falls over but is saved by Misaki, who was chasing the purse snatcher. Despite Aoi's verbal abuse, the boys enjoyed the filming process. The memory card coincidentally lands below on Usui, who is lying on a park bench. Misaki tells the sports club members to clean up their smelly club rooms. Although they initially refuse, Yukimura convinces them otherwise upon mentioning that onigiri will be provided by the student council. After the student council finishes making onigiri, the famished sports club members barge in the classroom to eat, but they discard and unknowingly insult Misaki's round and hard onigiri. Angered by this, Misaki chases the sports club members out of the classroom. Usui soon visits Misaki and praises her hard work. Kano overhears and wonders why Misaki and Usui will not profess their feelings. Later on, a transfer student named Hinata Shintani arrives. He irritates Misaki with his childish personality and gluttony for food, despite being skinny in appearance. But the male students admire his innocent behavior and accurate sense of smell with snacks. Hinata reveals that he used to live in the area and has returned to find his first love, revealed to be Misaki. Upon hearing this, Misaki realizes that Hinata has been her childhood friend, Yokun. Misaki later blurts out Hinata's nickname when he falls from a tree. Upon realizing Misaki's identity, Hinata lands on his feet and hugs Misaki, much to everyone's dismay. The sophomores of Seika High School take a field trip for a five-day journey to enlightenment at a Buddhist temple in a forest. Not only does Misaki have to deal with the interest of the girls in her relationship with Hinata, but Misaki also has to tolerate Usui and Hinata vying for her attention. After dinner, Misaki accidentally gets trapped with Hinata in a locked storehouse, where he urges her to see him as a man. After eavesdropping, Usui unlocks the storehouse, interrupting with a dual challenge against Hinata before Misaki can react. On the fourth day of the trip, the boys lose their sanity due to the grueling activities and start lusting after the girls. As the girls brace themselves in their log cabin, Misaki goes outside to stop the boys and drives them away with the help of Usui and Hinata. When Hinata calls Usui an awesome guy, Usui teases Hinata for his diminutive vocabulary. Usui later confronts Misaki about her feelings for Hinata, and she explains that she only sees Hinata as a childhood friend. Relieved with her answer, Usui faints over Misaki against the tree due to hunger. Erika asks Misaki for help after accidentally promising to date a customer, which is prohibited by the made latte employees. Should he win the dessert eating contest? A few days later, Misaki joins this contest in disguise to ensure that the customer loses. However, Hinata also joins and ends up beating the other contestants, which rewards him with a commemorative photo with the maid of his choice. As Hinata naturally selects Misaki to be his maid, Misaki storms out in disguise before Hinata can recognize her. On the park bench, Usui tries to comfort an exhausted Misaki. The next day, Satsuki and Erika create a diversion to keep Misaki's secret hidden from Hinata. With Usui as a witness, Misaki struggles to deceive Hinata by going to maid latte as a customer instead of a waitress. As she steps out due to the pressure, Hinata tells Usui that Misaki helped him properly grieve over his deceased parents during childhood. Misaki comes back and decides to reveal the truth to Hinata. Usui then dresses up like a butler to defuse the scene. Once outside, Usui warns Hinata to stay away from Misaki, who is confused by their jealous squabbles. The rivalry between Usui and Hinata causes both of them to be kicked out of the student council room by Misaki. The next day, Misaki learns that Maid Latte will be hosting an upcoming Magical Maids Day, where the employees dress up as witches from an anime series. Meanwhile, Hinata meets Minako in the streets after picking up her dropped parsimons. After accompanying Minako to her home, Hinata explains to Misaki that he is searching for a cherry tree where they used to play together. When Magical Maid's Day comes, the employees put on a magical performance for the customers. However, when Usui and Hinata each arrive, their tension results in Usui deciding to leave. 
Hinata asks Misaki to cast a spell on him so that he can find the cherry tree. After the work shift, Aoi wants to know the current relationship between Misaki and Usui. While taking out the trash, Misaki finds Usui waiting for the same answer. He blocks her punch caused by embarrassment, then embraces her and murmurs a no-lying spell in her ear. She stops resisting his hug. Elsewhere, Hinata finds the cherry tree and convinces himself that his meeting with Misaki was faded. Hinata, despite being popular with the girls during middle school, continues to think about Misaki. Sakura invites Misaki and Shizuko to the Yamesaki High School Cultural Festival, where Uksumishi are holding a concert, in which Sakura assures that Kuga has changed for the better. Usui tags along after begging Misaki to let him come. Mei Latte hosts a fortune-telling day, in which Erika as a fortune-teller informs Hinata about Usui that their relationship with Misaki are respectively a sinking paper boat, and incompatible like fire and water. After the work shift, a depressed Usui provokes Misaki to ask if he's going to give up on her over his fortune. The next day, Hinata helps Misaki mop the mud-tracked wooden floor of the school entrance. Their clothes end up being soaked due to Hinata's negligence, prompting Usui to cover Misaki's revealing camisole underneath with his dress shirt and accompany her to get changed. Hinata sadly realizes that Misaki has fallen for someone else, which his friends from middle school had warned him about. A few days later, Misaki and Usui get separated from Sakura and Shizuko in the crowd of Uksumushi fans at the Yamesaki High School Cultural Festival. After fleeing from the crowd, Misaki and Usui join a couple's contest. Despite her initial reluctance, Misaki is teased and provoked by Usui. They complete the couple's contest and win special tickets to the after-party fireworks. After the Uksumishi concert, Misaki tries to find Sakura and Shizuko only to find Kuga instead. Misaki gets some reassurance that Kuga is serious about Sakura. Kuga wonders why Misaki is not dating Usui yet and accuses her of being cruel to him. During the after party, Misaki and Usui dress up as Romeo and Juliet as part of their prize, as they go to an empty classroom to get a better view of the fireworks. With Kuga's words on her mind, Misaki confesses to Usui that she wants to be with him even though she doesn't understand her feelings. They share a kiss during the display of fireworks. After he confesses his love for her, they leave the classroom while holding hands. And that's the end of the video. As always, if you liked what you saw, subscribe to the channel. I'll be uploading a lot of videos just like this, so I'll see you at the next one.